So um, Grayson's Art Club. This was really the hit of lockdown. Um, it was a series on Channel 4 that started in April. And Grayson Perry and his wife, uh, Philippa, we saw them every week in their studio um, making artworks. And really Grayson thought up the idea for an art club because he wanted, um, he, he wanted to find a way of us to kind of survive this crisis. And he thought that art could be the way that we could do that. So each week he set a different theme and uh, members of the public sent in their artworks. Over 10,000 people sent in their artworks um, and they selected um, the works that they thought told the best stories, the most interesting stories. Um, and also, they, I think they were really mindful of giving a real variety of, of media. So it's not just, you know, works in paint, on the wall, the sculptures, there's even an installation uh, with a fridge. Um, so I'm sure most of you have probably seen the programme or the programmes, the series. Um, and then on Friday, last Friday, um, the, the making of the exhibition program was, um, was launched. And um, amazingly that had uh, over, I think it was 1.1 million viewers on that night. Um, and really just reading all the, 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 the comments on Twitter, people absolutely loved it. And I think Grayson has really kind of struck a chord with, with this art club. Um, and he's really kind of, I don't know, sort of got into the, the, the soul of the nation, if you like. Um, the reason why we were so keen to host this exhibition was because I suppose the ideas around the art club really chime with our vision um, here at the gallery, that art can be uh, such an important part of life. It's really important for the, the health of society. And we do everything we can to encourage creativity which of course is exactly what the art club did as well. So what we're gonna do on this tour is we're going to pick out a few different works from each of the themes to talk about. Now we've decided to pick works that weren't really focused, uh, weren't really a focus on the programs because the, the program is available on 4OD. Anybody can go back and watch it at any time. We wanted to pick out some things that perhaps hadn't been seen. So um, I'm going to give a brief introduction to each theme. And then Fiona is going to talk about individual um, artworks. So we're standing inside the first theme, which is portraits. And portraits is, is well, portraits was the first subject um, for, the, um, for the series. Um, and it's also one of those timeless subjects. I mean, portraits in art history have gone back, you know, since, since the moment, you know, somebody picked up um, um, a, a kind of drawing material. And I think what's so interesting about portraiture is that it's not necessarily just about the person that's depicted. It's actually about the artist and who they see in front of them and how they represent that person. So Fiona, you're going to talk about a couple of different works. Yeah, and there's just something, a couple of other things I wanted to say before we start, but um, one of the real joys about working on the project was to kind of get to know everybody that contributed to, um, to the exhibition and made works and uh, that were on display here. Um, we really, really got to know people virtually, unfortunately, but everything that I'm going to talk about today, some of which is quite personal, are stories that are actually within the labels that accompany the artwork. So it's all stories that people are quite happy for us to tell. Some of them are um, really, really kind of quite personal and some of them are quite difficult. Um, but then there's others that are just full of joy as well. was um, by Lucille de Winston White, which is this amazing portrait, or self-portrait, um, of Lucille de, who was in year 11 um, and was one of those thousands of uh, young people that were about to finish school when COVID hit. Um, and so their whole experience of 
of finishing school was completely different to um, previous years. Um, she was struggling to get her GCSEs um, done and one of them was, was GCSE art. And so she was encouraged by her teacher to make work at home. Um, and I really love this work because it tells us so much of what she was feeling um, at that time, but also it's gonna speak to so many other people as well. Um, so Lucilda's found a piece of wood that was used in a building project at home um, and painted this um, self-portrait of herself in a mask, but also with her signed shirt, which many of us will kind of remember when you're finishing high school, you, um, everybody kind of signs their shirt. So there's a kind of element of recognition of the past in there, um, but she did have a very different kind of experience. And I just think it's a really beautiful self-portrait as well. And it reflects that kind of real moment in time. Um, and the other work that I wanted to talk about was by um, an artist I really admire called Chantal Joffe. Again, another self-portrait. Many of the works in this section are portraits rather than self-portraits. They're portraits of other people. But this is um, a self-portrait that Chantal painted um, in lockdown in her nighty. So she has been painting herself since the age of six and a couple of years ago embarked on a project to create a self-portrait every day. And at one stage, I would love to see all of these self-portraits together. But what I really like about this painting um, is there is kind of no vanity in there at all. It's very kind of raw. Um, she'll have got up in the morning in her nightdress and just started to paint straight away. Um, and what she'd said is, you know, being, just being your own subject, you can just kind of completely um, focus and get into um, painting yourself in a really kind of quick manner. Um, it's a really good place to start. Um, so yeah, I really, really love that painting. And then the final piece I was gonna talk about in here, there are quite a few pieces by Chris, uh, of Chris Whitty throughout the exhibition that we'll see. So some people will recognize Joe Lysert's and Penny Lally's bust here. But the final work I wanted to talk about is right on the other side of the room. Um, and it's by Barbara Ann Swan. It's called Behind the Mask. It's a really raw self-portrait. Um, it's um, a relief print on paper and it almost looks like an x-ray to me. And it really is kind of getting under the skin of what Barbara was feeling in that first period of lockdown. So she had a chipped tooth, she couldn't visit the dentist. It was all adding to her anxiety. And I'm sure a lot of people will recognize those kinds of feelings. Um, and so she created this really um, beautiful um, self-portrait, but almost of a fractured self but there's some fantastic details in there with her piercings, with her necklace. Um, she talked about the fact that she appreciated being able to wear a mask because it covered her chipped tooth. But for, for this artwork, she's kind of completely unveiled herself or unmasked herself um, and put herself kind of out there. So I really, really love this work. And I think we're now gonna move through to view from my window. Okay, so um, view from my window, um, this is the, the next theme. And I think what's really interesting about this is I remember that feeling during lockdown when we were all locked in our houses and, um, you know, actually the view out of the window became so much more important, you know, wanting to see the world, wanting to connect with the outside world. And, you know, if a delivery van came up the street or if somebody was walking their dog, you know, that was quite an exciting thing to, to, to watch. So I think this subject um, is, what's really interesting about this subject for me, I think, is that the view from the window in a way is very static, but actually, of course, it can change completely depending on how you're feeling that day. You might paint the same view or make a work about the same view over and over again, but it might look very different depending on your emotional state. Fiona. So the first work I wanted to talk about in this section is by Bethany Kelly, and it's this um, collage, um, paint and collage. Um, it's 
one of the many works that um, have been made using materials that you could find around the house. It's full of colour. Um, it's a very kind of dynamic piece, but actually Bethany talks a lot about feeling like claustrophobic, being in one room, her bed's in that room, and actually looking out the window, she's surrounded by buildings. So she's actually chosen to depict um, the view of her room and what that means to her. And she's even gone so far as um, using really tiny images of friends, um, photographs of friends that she's put onto these really beautiful green walls. She's used scraps of fabric from clothing. She's used dried flowers. And I love the books on the shelf, these kind of multicolored books. Um, it's just a brilliant composition. I also love the fact that she's um, got her cat Leon. So she's called the paint, um, the, the collage, the view from my window starring my beautiful cat Leon, who's her kind of faithful companion. And he's sort of taken over the bed in the, in the, um, in the artwork here. So I just love all the kind of textures and the colors um, and the sense of kind of joy in quite difficult circumstances, actually. Um, the other work I did want to talk about is by Claire Wilkes. It's coloured ink on paper and it's called So Near Yet So Far. Um, and Claire, like so many people, um, was having to um, self-isolate. She was, she'd had medical um, treatment and her sons came back from university but actually moved in with their neighbours. So the way that she could get to, to see them was over the neighbor's garden wall. Um, they would get together sort of socially distanced over lunch, um, but you really get a sense of her looking out um, of this kind of frame um, into the garden to see her sons and to kind of connect. Um, but she said that drawing really did keep her going throughout that first lockdown. Um, and I think those stories tend to come out again and again in a lot of the artworks here. So we're just going to now move on to the next section. If I had my way, I would talk about every artwork, but um, there's 87, I think, in the show. So that's quite impossible. So the next section we're going to look at is animals. So I love this section. This is one of my favourites. And I think that animals during lockdown actually became so much more important um, to people. We spent a lot more time with our pets. Um, and in this section, actually, it, there are a lot of pets, but there are also, you know, other animals like Paul Green's um, uh, wire birds here. Um, and um, we've had quite a lot of fun, actually, when we were... Um, I suppose, laying out this section because we wanted the dogs, the dogs to be looking at the cats. So we've got um, Harry Hill Solomon. He's looking at um, Grayson's uh, plague cat here, great Chris Whitty's cat. Um, we've got the cats, um, Philippa Perry's cats looking at the birds. So we quite like those, um, those kind of interactions. Um, and I think the thing about pets, apart from them, you know, being, being, such a comfort they also are a place where we project our our hopes and our dreams and our fears as well so fiona which works are you going to talk about um i first of all wanted to talk about billy i love billy i love an underbite and billy has a very pronounced underbite um so Anne bridgman has um used um, paint and watercolour pencils to create Billy. Um, and she talks about how taking on one walks, one person even said he looks like the devil. Um, but I think he's so cute. Um, everybody that sees Billy always raises a smile. Um, the other thing I really love about this work is Anne said that she hadn't picked up a paintbrush for 25 years until she saw Art Club. So it was Grayson and Philippa and their cat Kevin that inspired her to make this work. Um, and I think she kind of really underestimates how brilliant it is and how joyful it makes everybody feel. And then there were two other works I wanted to talk about that are side by side. First one is Lulu in the corner over here. Um, 
This is by Jill Dudley and she painted it for her friend who owns Lulu and Lulu has, um, doesn't have sight anymore, but she's a real comfort to, um, to uh, Jill's friend, Jane. So she, Lulu goes for these walks on the beach every day and always goes to her favorite log. Um, and you can just tell that she's kind of really well loved. There was something um, I think in the art club program that Grayson had said about the way that this had been painted and how reminiscent it was of a Ford Maddox Brown painting called Scapegoat. Is it? Yeah, um, which we have in our collection. So yeah, we, we really love this because it does feel like it has that connection to our collection as well. And then the final work in this section I wanted to say to to mention was Susan Hubbard and Tyler Brown. This is a really beautiful painting. It's full of um, character um, and it's also very personal. So Susan worked as part of um, a, a special unit for children with challenging behavior. And she wanted to try and get across the um, atmosphere and the kind of chaos within those settings. But also she's used really early um, artworks by her grandson, Tyler. Um, which is incorporated into this painting. And this is Tyler here, I understand, who's now grown up. Um, <laughs> but what I love about it is the, the cat, the expression on the cat's face, and this kind of sense of pure fear with uh, somebody with a pair of very sharp scissors in the top. So there is there's so much fun and joy, and it's just so beautifully um, made. So I think we're now going to move on and start to look at some of the artworks that are in Britain, which is just over this way. Mm -hmm. oh. So, Britain is such a great subject. It's really about how we see ourselves. And I actually think the whole experience of the pandemic and lockdown really, um, I suppose, shone a light on how we responded collectively. And I think there was that real sense of we are all in it together. Um, and I think in this section as well, you know, you see different traits of Britishness, the queuing, um, the clapping for the NHS, um, the kind of streets and houses we live in, you know, you, you see, you see a real, I suppose, taste of this country. And, and you know, we, we are very unique, I think, with our, you know, in our, as, as all countries are, of course. Um, and one of the things that, that Grayson talked about was, you know, we're showing our tolerance um, and our generosity as a nation, but also our vulnerability. And he said that all of those things are great qualities. So Fiona is going to talk about a work which actually is, in a way, has been in the news today, which is all about um, citizenship. And of course, in the news today, they're talking about the costs of getting British citizenship and how that we are one of the most expensive countries um, to get in Europe to get it. So I just wanted to talk about um, this piece by Georgia Roosh. Um, Georgia has lived in this country since she was a child. And when I first saw this picture, it looked really celebratory. And it wasn't until Georgia got in touch to tell us a bit more about the story behind it. Um, so she, as I say, she'd been living here since she was a child. She went to apply for a job in her mid thirties and suddenly found out she didn't have the right to remain in the country. Um, so there was this whole period of trying to prove that she was a British citizen and could stay in the country and what that would mean, which was extremely stressful, um, as I can only imagine. Um, and eventually she did manage to get there, but obviously through um, a particularly difficult time um, emotionally and financially. Um, so this is actually of, of Georgia's citizenship ceremony and which she said was a really kind of surreal experience in a town hall with a man in a suit handing her a, um, a certificate with sort of tinny celebratory music it was all kind of quite bizarre but actually it does kind of encapsulate that moment of joy when she knows she's safe she can stay here with her friends and her family so I think it's a really powerful piece 
Um, and then one of the other things I, uh, the other pieces I wanted to talk about, Natasha had touched on, was that sense of people coming together to, um, to celebrate the NHS. So there's a painting just over in the corner here by Jacqueline Taylor. And I think it's a scene lots of people are going to recognise, the Thursday night 8pm clap that everybody um, hopefully took part in during lockdown. Um, and George is actually relatively local to Manchester and she's painted her street. Um, she said that there's a real kind of cross section of society living there. And what, sh what really became apparent was um, how people wanted to come together to, to come out and support the NHS and each other. Um, so you can see the rainbows in the window, you can see all families coming together um, from all different kinds of backgrounds um, in, a, in that real kind of celebration. And then I also just finally in this section wanted to talk a bit about this piece which kind of encapsulates the NHS in action. So this is a really moving piece created by Susan and Adrian Dent. Um, Adrian had been diagnosed with his kind of second bout of cancer and it was in his head and neck. So he had to go through a really difficult recovery um, or treatment and recovery period with surgery and radiotherapy. Um, so they made this piece together from his radiotherapy mask. Um, it's a really beautiful piece that not only kind of reflects his medical journey, but also um, the, the landscape of where they live in Wiltshire. So it is almost like a kind of global map of where they live. Um, they had a problem when they fired it in, in that the piece shattered, but actually they've made virtue of that by um, showing the cracks and actually how things have come together. So it's a real kind of piece that also that celebrates um, those kind of frontline staff um, and what they did for Adrian and what they do for so many people, um, but also this sense of kind of survival and hope and coming together. So I just think that is perfect for that British section. Um, and now we're gonna move on. There's just two more sections. The next one we're gonna look at is home. So home, we all have homes and homes are the places that we decorate, we put in soft furnishings, we put pictures on the walls to really kind of express our personalities. But of course it's so much more than that. Our homes are our private spaces where we can, you know, hide from the outside world, where we can be safe and secure. And of course in lockdown, our homes became even more important we spent so much more time in them. And even now we've just had our, this, this, the second lockdown. Um, and even though that has uh, now been lifted in Manchester, we're still in tier three. So most people are working from home if they can. There are still many, many people um, over the whole country who are isolating. So it really shows the importance of home at this time. So the first work I was going to talk about is um, a very kind of different version of home. This is by Jenny Brennan. Um, Jenny and her husband um, are serving um, soldiers. Um, so they've moved around a lot in their life. They've got children. They obviously that can be quite disruptive. But the one constant in their life is their caravan. And it's their caravan that um, brings their, um, the whole family together to make new memories. Um, it goes everywhere with them. So even though they're in this kind of state of flux or, or um, sort of temporary accommodation through quite a lot of their life, this is the one place that they can come together. So for, um, for Jenny, this really signifies home. Um, she talked about during lockdown how it, that, their temp, that their home was stranded on the driveway. So she wanted to depict um, their, their kind of their constant home, but the fact that it's kind of static um, and, and remaining where it is. And then the other piece I wanted to talk about in um, the home section was by Janine Sullivan. Um, I love the title, it's called Fag On. <laughs> um, she talks about 
how it's oh so it's a, it's a digital drawing so it's quite an unusual um, technique um, and what she's managed to do is kind of create this real sort of warmth in the colors and the glow of the food so it feels very kind of homely this work um, and it depicts um, her neighbors uh, John and Kathy who've been together 59 years um, and Janine talks about the fact that John and Kathy are kind of like family to her um, and her Janine's daughter Willow would make meals every now and again and bring them to um, to John and Kathy next door and as they open the door um, Kathy's fag would just kind of billow out smoke <laughs> um, but she said there was one day where she'd made this roast dinner for them um, and they opened the door and they were just so appreciative, but it, she wanted to capture that specific moment, which she did so with, um, on, with a photograph, which she's kindly allowed us to include. And you can just see how well she's captured um, her neighbors. Um, but again, it's kind of looking at how everybody's come together to support each other and make those connections that they can. So your actual family might not be anywhere near you. You might not be able to see them, but you can kind of create that family um, with the people that are, that are around you and that potentially need your help. And then we're finally going to go into fantasy. The fantasy is all about the imagination. It's where we can express our darkest fears um, and also our hopes for the future. And fantasy can take you anywhere. There's no limits to fantasy. And that's why it's so great because it's all about the creativity of the imagination. So Fiona, you're going to talk about Oh. I've snuck in an extra oh. work. <laughs> I'm really sorry our crew's not going to be happy because I've snuck in an extra work. But um, I remember seeing this image on the original series um, and just really loving it. And then when it arrived, I loved it even more. So it's by uh, Leanne Jackson, who's an art tutor. And um, a bit like Lucilda, who we saw at the beginning, um, she, but, but from the kind of teaching perspective, she was trying to struggle with how she kept her students going, how she helped them through their GCSEs. Um, and one of the ways that she did this was by making her own work. So she worked in collage um, and she talked about wanting to try and get across this leap of faith to try something new, to keep going. Um, and I think she's done it beautifully in this collage with this kind of rainbow motif as well, which kind of, again, reflects back to that symbol of the rainbow that people um, use it, were using to celebrate the NHS and that sense of coming together. So I really love that work. And then finally, there are two works here that I am gonna end with. Um, the first one here is by Seamus Killick. Um, so I love the idea um, behind this work. So Seamus would mark the end of the week by dressing up and creating these new characters. And he said it was a, a way of kind of getting through that first period of lockdown. And he started it by dressing up as death and playing a game of chess with his father. So he would involve his whole family. Um, and it kind of culminated in a performance where everybody dressed up and walked through the streets of Cardiff. Um, and it's hard to, um, to, to get that across in, in just one image, but this is a really kind of amazing fantasy image. Um, and Seamus talks about how people can use art as a way of coping and an, as a way of escaping. And you can kind of create this alter ego to, um, to, to kind of work through some of the trauma, work through some of those difficult times. And then the final piece I was going to talk about 
It's a digital G-Clay print by Tom Rushmer, and it's called COVID-19. And I remember seeing this again in the program and Grayson talking about it in terms of a, like a very kind of sci-fi image with planet COVID coming, uh, looming over a suburban street. Um, but actually what Tom had um, articulated through the text for the label um, was that the starting point for this was this inspiration um, of seeing people in lockdown, looking out for people that were shielding, that couldn't leave their homes and helping them. So there is a figure, a masked figure here who has a bag of shopping and he's waving at people um, across the road. And he said that, you know, there were, he'd got this real kind of sense of um, compassion and empathy that people were showing for one another. So again, I think a really, it is quite a sort of fantastical image, but again, another really kind of hopeful um, and warm piece of work. So I think that's gonna bring our specific tour to a close and we were gonna start looking at some questions. Well, just so just before we do, I just wondered whether we should just mention the MAG Art Club. Yes. So we've, we've set up our own, um, our own art club, actually, for people in Manchester, Greater Manchester and beyond, if people want to um, submit um, works. Um, and this is a digital art club, so people can send in works um, on a different theme. The first theme that we're starting with is Manchester. Um, and there's information on our website about how to um, send in works. Um, but the hashtag is Mag Art Club. Um, the other thing I wanted to say just before we move to questions is that there's a whole range of um, rather wonderful merchandise in the um, in in our shop, and that is also available online. And the thing that I've been clutching is is a copy of the book, and this does have images of all the works in the show. So although we haven't been able to show you absolutely everything, there are images, um, or images of absolutely everything in the book um, and that's available online. So Martin, do we have any questions? Yeah, we've got one. What would you like to see in that series? Well, do you know what? We do know that there is another series and I think it's coming out next, well, it's definitely coming out next year. But they haven't, it's really funny, they haven't told us what the themes are. They're obviously keeping quite tight lipped. But yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? What themes? Togetherness. Touch would be good <laughs> if we're allowed to by then. Um, health, mm. in a general sense, I think would be good because it could be mental, it could be physical. Wow. Family, maybe family and about those relationships. Although a lot of people obviously have, have depicted that already. Mm. Yeah, recovery would be a good one. Mm. It's strange, isn't it? Because I'll probably change my mind in about three weeks <laughs> <laughs> when things hopefully start to improve. Um, actually, fear might be quite a good one to look at as well, because I think there has been this kind of strange sense. So for people to kind of look back, one of the things that Chantal Joffe actually talked about with her paintings was that she, she was trying to get a sense of, if by painting herself every day, whether you would see the kind of experience of what's happened in her face, but she said she won't know that until later and she starts to look back on them. So actually it would be quite good to think about if there's a theme that could kind of look back and kind of from where we are then in the spring. So maybe hope, hope could be another, yep. another theme or the mm. future. What does the future, future look like? Because everyone, yeah, talks about the new normal. Well, what, what is the new normal? What does that look like? Mm. Yeah, well, that's a great question. Thank it you is. for whoever submitted that. <laughs> Okay, so that question is, um, I'm not quite sure whether people can hear you asking that question, Martin, so I'm just going to repeat the question. So, will the artworks um, um, be, be given back to the, um, the people that, that made them, or will they stay together as a collection? So, um, I mean, that question is, 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 is a really good one, because that's really ties into sort of how we organize an exhibition. And in fact, I was going to say a few things about that. So yes, in answer to the question, all the artworks will go back to the people who made them, who've lent them to us. And in fact, in some cases, um, some of the artworks had actually been given to other people, to friends. Um, so we've had to borrow them, not necessarily from the artist, but from the person that, that is the new owner. And 
one of the things that I wanted to, to mention about this show is that um, we, Manchester Art Gallery uh, was selected um, to be the venue and um, we, were, we were particularly um, delighted because, you know, obviously, as I've said before, it really chimes with, with what we believe in. But we, we only found out, we, well, we found out that we had seven weeks to kind of do the show in. Now, normally when we're organizing exhibitions, we might have 18 months, two years, um, and actually we did it in seven weeks. So it was a real massive team effort, all hands on deck, um, everybody kind of mucked in. And the first thing that we did was we actually brought the artworks to Manchester. And Fiona had been in touch with all the participants to ask them how they wanted their works framed, uh, mounted, displayed. Um, and so then, then there was a huge framing uh, period where we had um, a framer made all the frames, then he came on site, there was a big production line, all socially distanced of course, um, with our conservation team and they put the works in the frames and the framers again, um, you know, put them all together. So, so it was, it was a, you know, a huge big project and even to make the book, you know, we had everything photographed. I mean, it was just, yeah, a huge undertaking, but something that we were all delighted to do and it gave us a real focus here at the gallery. Um, and, and we're just thrilled with, with the results. And I think the final thing to say is, we cannot wait to open. <laughs> we really want to share this exhibition with everybody. Um, that's why we're doing this tour today because we're not open. Um, but we really hope that um, either we go into tier two very soon um, or that they change the restrictions for tier three to allow museums and galleries to open. Because of course, museums and galleries are incredibly safe places to visit. There are all the measures that have been put in place. Um, we opened in August. Um, we put in all the measures. It's, you know, we've had huge feedback from all the people that have visited to say that they feel very safe. So. We, you know, we just can't wait. We, you know, we think it's much safer to come to museums and galleries than to take your chances at the gym or at Primark. Um, so oh. we really hope, we really, really hope that we can, we can reopen soon. I just really um, wanted to say something quickly about that question as well, because as Natasha mentioned, there was a kind of, yeah, a, a huge effort to pull everything together. Uh, our registrars had to contact everybody from, uh, Scotland down to Land's End to try and get work. There was um, an artwork on an island near Barrow. So they've kind of come from all four corners of the UK. Um, and we were sending out brilliant kind of technicians to go and collect pack works and collect works and bring them here. Um, so yeah, it's kind of felt like it's sort of nonstop. Um, but it has been really joyful at the same time. But also just on that question about bringing, keeping the works together. There are so many works that have this kind of personal connection for so many people so they really do want those works back um, there are some that are digitally created so there are some um, artists that can kind of remake their works um, so yeah there's all kinds of different things to take into account so it'd be difficult to try and keep them all together I think um, but what's great is we've documented the show really well everything is within the book as Natasha said so we have got that kind of um, documentation or, of, of the show and, it, and its legacy Oh, one more question. Okay. <laughs> That's a great question. God, it, it, I can't choose a favorite. It's so hard because they're all so different. Mm -hmm. Um, there, are, there are things that I really love from an aesthetic point of view, there are things that I really love from a technical point of view, and then some from an emotional point of view, so it's hard to pick anyone, and I'm not just being diplomatic, it is really difficult. Um, I think what I've just appreciated is the different types of media that people have used. Um, so we've got everything from FIMO clay to photography to painting to ceramic to collage, you know, that I've just really appreciated all that different media. And I think I said on the programme the other night that um, we've never really had this many artists in one show before, but I think we really had this much media in one show before. So it is impossible to pick any particular work to say that's a favourite. What was the second part of the question? Was there a second part? Or was that it? Oh, I'm, 
Yeah, did anything I, surprise you? Um, I kind of, I've been surprised by all of them, actually, because it's hard when you see something on screen. And that's, again, echoing Natasha, I really want the show to open because you don't really get the full sense of the work until you get to see it. You don't get the um, amazing detail in Alex Robinson's little sculptures or the, the kind of rawness of Laura Mars' pregnant belly. You don't get any of that by just seeing a photograph. So um, I've been really surprised as things have arrived. And it was like Christmas kind of opening boxes and packages and things going, oh my God, that's that, that's so different. Or that's a complete different scale to I thought to what I thought so yeah I was kind of surprised by pretty much everything <laughs> so I'm going to be very undiplomatic and tell you which my favorites were <laughs> um, so I and I think pretty much all of the nation really like Alex Robinson's um, computer world climo figures um, which are, are, are just in front of me in a vitrine and I think and they really surprised me I didn't think I was going to like them I thought I knew what they were. I thought, oh yeah, yeah, seen that kind of thing before. And actually when they arrive, they are all incredibly different. They all have a completely different personality, different features, and they are all exquisitely made. And when I think of my sort of, you know, fingers, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking I just wouldn't have the dexterity to make those. They're amazing. My second favorite are the wire birds by Paul Green, which I absolutely love. And I think, um, a bit like Fiona was saying, it's that sort of joy in the making and the materials, the kind of using, you know, using wire to kind of create a bird, a bird that has, you know, its, its, its features um, and the, the way they're sort of walking or standing, you know, you really, you really do get that sense of the bird. And for me, it was a real joy to meet Paul when he came up here um, uh, for the filming of the programme um, and to hear him talk about Minsmere, um, the bird sanctuary, just that he, he painted such a wonderful picture. I wanted to go straight there and be there. So yeah, for me, those two are my favourites. Okay, is that it for questions? One last oh, one last one, one yes. Will the exhibition tour? Will the exhibition tour? Well, that's out of our hands, really. Um, yeah, we, we, we understand that it won't tour, um, unfortunately. Um, I mean, we're, we think one of the reasons that it's in Manchester is because we are, you know, sort of, I suppose, um, central geographically in the country. I mean, obviously, we're still a, a long way away from Cornwall or Aberdeen, but, you know, we, we are pretty central and there are great transport links to, to get here. Um, so we hope that people will be able to visit. The exhibition is on until the 18th of April, so there is quite a bit of time. So hopefully, if the restrictions change, um, you know, we will be open and hopefully you will all be able to come and see this wonderful exhibition. So have I got time to say one more thing? <laughs> um, I just want to talk a bit about the legacy because even though it might not tour, there is a kind of real legacy for a lot of the individual artists in the show as well. So, I mean, I for one would love to see Alex's figures um, animated. So if there's anyone out there that knows animation companies, I think it would make a brilliant animated series. Um, but also, you know, there are so many artists that hadn't picked up a pencil, pen, whatever kind of material for so long that have had a real kind of epiphany um, and found so much joy in making work. Um, but then there's been other real tangible outcomes. So for instance, Hannah Grace Stella, who created these amazing photographs. Um, there's one of a dog show, um, really beautiful kind of brightly colored photograph of a dog show from before lockdown but then she created a series of photographs in lockdown one of her uh, one of herself in full ppe because she was working on a covid ward um, and she's now been contacted by chris difford from squeeze to create an album and work with songwriters so there's been kind of lots of tangible outcomes paul selling his birds his wire birds so there are lots of kind of ways that um People are benefiting from from the exhibition kind of longer term as well so i think it's had that kind of real sort of positive impact on individuals as well as kind of creating a real kind of sense of joy anyway from looking at a lot of the um, comments we've had on social media as a result of the programs great 
So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, it's been a wonderful opportunity for us to share some of the exhibitions and share some highlights with you. Um, and thank you for bearing with us. This is the first time we've done this. So thank you for being our guinea pigs. And uh, we do hope to be able to welcome you into the gallery soon. Thank you. Bye.